Welcome to another Coding Like Matt MATLAB tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to focus on arrays. Arrays are probably the single most important memory structure in MATLAB and you're going to use them all the time. If you like this type of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're doing a new season of videos about how to get started with MATLAB right now, so now is a perfect time to make sure you don't miss a single episode. So let's talk about what an array is. The short story is an array is a set of variables in one, two, or more dimensions where you're able to basically put a value into a box. The difference between an array and a cell array is that in a normal array, every type that is used in that array has to be the same. So I can't mix a string and an integer together or an integer and a double. An array must all be of the same type. If you want to learn about cell arrays, I'm going to link our new tutorial on that subject coming out shortly here. So how do we define an array? Let's actually go ahead and actually make an array. The most simple array is something like a equals one. This is a one dimensional array with just a single value in it. It's weird to think that a isn't a variable, but actually if I look at the size of a, you see it's size one and one, meaning one row and one column. MATLAB is a bit unique in this respect in that almost everything is in fact an array if you just know how to look at it right. So let's say we wanted to make a one dimensional array which actually had multiple values in it. The way you could do this is by doing an equation that looks something like this. So now A has one row and three columns. It's important to know what order the indexes in a language are used. So in MATLAB, the order is row and then column and then page. So this array A has three columns and one row, which means it has size, remember row and then column, one row and three columns. And you can see this in the size command. On the other hand, what if I wanted to have more than one row? Well, to do that, I simply use a semicolon to indicate that I would like to generate a second row. And now if I use the size command, you can see there are two rows and three columns. MATLAB gives you a large number of utility classes for creating arrays of different types. So let's give an example. Let's say you wanted to create an identity matrix. This is something that you're going to want to do fairly often if you're doing linear algebra. And for this, we have the I command. As you can see, I provided the number of rows and columns, which for an identity matrix are the same, and it provides me a matrix that's three by three in this case, with ones along the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. I can also, for example, make a matrix in the same way entirely of ones. If you imagine for a moment that I would like to have it not be square, I can simply provide a second dimension and it will fill it in for you. A similar command of course exists for zeros. And additionally also for random numbers. So in this case I'm going to generate random numbers between 0 and 1 at every location along the axes. So each of these arrays is simultaneously an array as well as a matrix. So there's a number of different mathematical operations that could occur. For instance, I might multiply two three by three matrices in order to get a three by three matrix. So let's be very clear here. This multiplication operator is not a pointwise multiplication. So let's say I have a three by three matrix in A and a three by four matrix in B. You'll note that A times B is well defined. B times A is not. And this is because I'm doing a matrix multiplication when I do this. Similarly, A plus B is not defined. And that's because addition is an element-wise operation. 
when you add a matrix to another matrix in MATLAB, it will add each element to its matching element. However, I can in fact add A to itself. Now let's say for a moment that I did want to do an element-wise operation. I could, for example, multiply with a period in front two three by three matrices, or I could divide them. So this will divide the first random matrix by the second random matrix in an element-wise fashion. Many commands will take a input matrix and treat it as though you're operating on every single element separately. So you need to know which of these functions will be doing this. The only other thing I would caution about here is, let's say I have A, let's make A a random matrix again, three by four. If I do A apostrophe, this is a transpose of the matrix. That's what I was taught. However, I have found out actually the transpose is dot apostrophe. A normal apostrophe is in fact a Hermitian conjugate, and for real values it doesn't matter. For complex values it does. So just something to watch out for when you're doing mathematics in MATLAB. So now that we know how to do all of the different ways of creating, adding, subtracting, multiplying a matrix, let's talk about array indexing. So if I have my matrix A, Let's say I want to access the top left entry in this 0.35. One way I can do that is A of 1. Now, here's a question. If I do A of 2, do you think it's going to do 0.616 or 0.196? This is called a linear index, and you need to know whether memory is stored row-wise or column-wise. When we actually enter it, you see that it says 0.196. And that's because in MATLAB, the column is iterated over first, and then the row. The question is, in general, how do I deal with my linear indexing? The best advice I can give you is, number one, debug your code carefully. But number two, uh, there are two utility commands provided by MATLAB. The first is sub to index. Sub to end will convert you from a particular n-dimensional set of indices to the actual linear index. So, for example, if I put in sub to ind size of a to 2, it will tell me that the a to 2 value, that is row 2 column 2, is 0.47333, but I can also do a of 5 and get the same value out. So both of these indices got me the 0.4733. They were both pointing to the second row, second column, but two different ways. There's also a second command that lets me reverse this process called int to sub. And the process is exactly the same, except it will tell me that to get to the fifth linear element, I will need to go to the second row, second column. So these allow you to isolate the linear and the nonlinear indices for the array. Finally, let's look at what are called slices. So if I want to look at just part of an array, let's say I wanted to look at the first row of A, then I would select row 1 and all values. Similarly, I can do just the first column of A. And what you see is that by using the semicolon, I can specify a variable I would like to look at all of the values for. Now, all of these tricks work in higher dimensions as well, although in general, I have found performance of arrays in MATLAB drops off precipitously after you go beyond two dimensions. So it is wise to keep yourself to one dimension where possible and two dimensions if you must, particularly for things like image data, there's not much you can do about this. If you are interested in more sophisticated, more advanced indexing strategies, I have a video I am linking here, which will tell you about something called logical indexing. This is the advanced strategy for how you can quickly and easily get 
any variables that you are really interested in out of an array. And in the near future, we'll be releasing a cell array video, which will talk about how to do this, where the variables can be of different types. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, maybe consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to see more of this stuff, we will be releasing new videos every week, so keep an eye out. And if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask them below. Thank you so much, and have a delightful day.